This is Lewis Hunt for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fire Store. Always good to be speaking to Dave Colwell on a nice Friday evening. Um, yeah, how's things, mate? How are you? I'm good, thanks, mate. Really good. Um, another good week in the gym, getting some good work in with the lads. Um, some good quality sparring going off in there as well. So, uh, yeah, good good week. All, all set for uh, a good weekend now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, just firstly, I guess, starting off, you know, you've done a lot of things in boxing, obviously, boxer, trainer, manager, promoter. Now, video game character as well, I see. Um, yeah, obviously, <laughs> a new undisputed game. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. it gets endless now. What's uh, I guess, how has that been? Uh, really cool. Do you know what? The kids will absolutely love it. My kids, you know. Um, unfortunately, my, my daughter knocked me out in my own gym. When I played, first time I played it, I was like, how has that just happened? Um but yeah, it's 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 good fun. It's really good fun. So uh, we, you know, it's quite a it's quite a privilege, and it's quite a big thing for me to you know to my kids can see me in a game. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's cool. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like just sort of touching on that there. Like you know, obviously it's a great honor for yourself, but it must be even better as you say. Like when you see sort of your kids. I know you always share on your story, like when you're sort of your daughter and your son always like look at yeah. my dad on TV and that, like when you do the punditry. Yeah. So it must be a bit of a proud, you must be a, a proud, proud father. Yeah, it is because their friends obviously have seen me in it as well. And they're mm. all, so it is, it's, it's nice. It's it's nice. It's, um yeah, it, it, it's good. So listen, when you're, a, for me, it's big. So imagine, you know, you're a champion boxer and you're in the game as well. You know, you, that, that must be a buzz that. And it is because I'm speaking to a lot of fighters and they're all excited about being in it, and they're all they're all buzzing to be in it. Um, it's good. It's a, it's it's great. That we've got a boxing game back on the go again as well. So uh, it's 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 done really really well. Yeah, definitely. Um, you mentioned about the gym there, and it's only right to guess touch on that. Um, obviously, uh, as you say, a good week in the gym, a busy gym. So uh, what's been, I guess what's been what's been really happening with everyone? Uh, Stephen Cairns has uh, got a fight coming up November. Dan Tower. November twenty second for for Wasserman Stephen with with uh, Queensbury and, and TNT. Um, Ellis will be back out in the November as well. We're looking at and um, hopefully December for Larone. Larone's back in sparring now. Been getting some quality work with uh, Callum Simpson. It's always good to have Callum and his coach Mark Hurley down there and and the rest of the team. So it's uh, yeah, we've been getting some really good work in the gym. It's been good. Yeah, absolutely. All good to hear. Um, yeah, just quickly move on. I guess tomorrow night is obviously a big, big night in Manchester. First sort of boxing boxing event in the Carp Arena, headlined by Jack Carroll taking on Regis Progre. Um, a bit of a crossroads fight, you can say. Obviously, Regis come off the back of a, a defeat to Devin Haney and a, and a not so great performance against Den- Denilito Zorilla before that. But Carroll having the momentum with the, the victory over Josh Taylor. Um, yeah, I guess for yourself, how do you see uh, the fight tomorrow night? Such a good fight. First of all, it's a really, really good fight. We know, you know, Jack's a very, very slick boxer, very good, very good at controlling the pace to how he wants to box. Um, you know, he's he's uh he's very in- intelligent. Um Regis, Regis is one of those where I I, I really enjoy watching Regis program fight, but for me the the, the Taylor fight, I thought was going to be, even though he got beat, uh, controversially or, you know, whichever way, it was not controversial, but it's a close fight, um, whichever way you want to look at it, even though he got beat, I thought he was going to push on and, you know, be an actual, like, like a big star of the sport. Um, yes, he's been on to be so successful since and everything, but he's never really got, gone to the heights of what I thought it was going to be. And then the, the Haney fight, I expect it to be a really, really good fight. Really good fight. Um, yes, I thought that it was all you know, it was be a bit of catch up because I thought that Haney's feet would be a bit too quick for him. But I was there at that and I never saw such a one sided dominant display by by Haney going into that fight. Um and it's how he recovers from that psychologically, really, as well. Um, you know, because it was really one sided. Um but I like I like Regis as a character. I think he's a you know he's a he's a fighter. He's a you know he's he's a proper tough man. Looks for the big challenges, and he's gone straight. You know this this is a, if you're looking at style wise, you look at what Haney did, and then you think what you know Jack Carroll's a slick boxer. You know it, it, maybe you'd like to have fought somebody that's going to stand in front of him a little bit more. 
um, rather than having to chase again. Um, but he's gone straight into a fight like this. Um, it's going to be very, very interesting. Um, we'll see what he's got left, but also we'll see we'll see how good Jack is as well. I mean, we know we know you know Jack's in with with the guys that he's been in. He's shown his levels, but Progre is a, a very experienced. Hard punching fighter, you know, very very good fighter. So this will, you know, this will show us again. Jack, we we feel as though needs to go and get into the mega fights in the division and, and get those world title shots. And if he can go in there and do a performance, put in a performance against Regis Progre, he's earned a shot. There you go, off you go. You know, get the biggest fights out there for him because Progre is a massive name in the sport. So um, you know, or, or a very big name in the sport. So. Uh, uh, it'd be a worthy win. Do you think the dangers of Progre are being slightly underrated in a way? Because I know he's got that, you know, a, a big, big left hand, obviously a monster left hand. And do you think that this sort of, it is being a little bit underrated in a sense? Because uh, obviously on the bookies or whether you look into that, no matter what, it's, it's pretty wide in Jack's favour. So do you think that every sort of, or is it uh, just looking at it? Yeah. I, I never look at, I don't, I don't, I don't really look at odds and things like that. I just see how, how I, how I kind of see it. Um, I just think style wise, I think Jack's all wrong for him. Um, mm. You know, he, he, he's, he's like I said, he's never looked as good really for me as, as what he did against Taylor program talking about. Um, but you know, when it, he's a good fighter, he's a very good fighter and we will see Carroll's levels because he, he may be, you know, he may be a little bit slower. He may, but he's very clever. He knows how to pick his punches, and he punches really hard. It does. I just feel as though his feet need to be a lot, lot better than what you know than what they what they have been in the past. Yeah. Um, Jack's got really good feet, really good ring IQ. Um, so I think, I think um, Jack's a if Jack's a big favorite on the bookies. I don't think he's a. I don't think he's a, a big big. Favorite, but I I would favor Jack to beat him. Um, but this is boxing, and and Regis Progre can really really punch. He can really punch. Um, I just feel as though his feet are going to be too slow. I think he's going to be one step at, one step behind, and Carroll's going to be you know maneuvering where he needs to be. Um, Jack's very disciplined. The good thing about Jack, he is very very disciplined. So when he's in with a puncher, you know Jamie and Nige. Travis want him to box a certain way and do a certain thing. He will follow instructions and and he won't worry about the pressure of the crowd or anything like that. He'll box how he needs to box for that fight. Um, so, you know, I expect a very disciplined performance. They know that they're in with a dangerous puncher that can switch your lights off. Um, but I believe that, he's, you know, mm-hmm. he's got he's got the capabilities to, to put on a, a really good boxing performance. And, you know, he's... Catapult him into into the big fights. Yeah, um, I, I wanted to touch on on yesterday's antics. Um, Jack Catterall and Progre, you're never going to get much back and forth between them. But I think uh, one thing I definitely didn't expect was I thought the press as the press conference was coming to an end, um, Regis sort of saved something right at the end. A voice note from from Sam Jones from a couple of years ago, where I guess quoting it, he said, "You know, I do think you flatter Jack, um, a flattened Jack." Sorry. Um, which was just, it had to get, I mean, her and all to be paid again because he was in such a shock. But when you heard that, I think everyone was sort of hands on head type of moment. I don't know what you thought as you thought the day. Oh, I thought it was, I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was brilliant. It's, um, oh, do you know, there's so much serious stuff that goes on. But I, I was saying to, you know, I was saying um, to a few guys in the gym today, I've been in boxing for like a long time, 34 years. And, there's so, there's so much seriousness to it, and there's there's characters that are, you know, big characters are kind of like on the way out of sport or left the sport, and there's not many big characters, fun characters around. Every you know, a lot of people go with the angle of being, you know, an arse, a proper arse, dislikable to get you know to get the interest and things like that. Um, the business side of it's shitty. Eh? So when you see something that makes you have a laugh and a giggle, it's good, and yeah. you know. That's why I say Sam Jones for me, regardless of what you think of him, the guy is funny. You know, it comes out. Listen, I work with Sam, um, with with Dan Towers. You know, I've I've got along with Sam for a long time. Um, I know how to take him. He will chat a lot of shit. He always does. But 
he's 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 a good salesman, you know. Yeah. He is a good salesman, um, and he will say what needs to be said to get things done. Really, um, when you know how to take him, you can. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. But he'll make you laugh. It's a, it's, you know, this is from a couple of years ago. He, I don't know. He, he was trying to get a fight made or trying to get on progress sides, get him to sign on the dot line or whatever. I don't know. But it's just so funny. It's a whole right hand to God shit. Yeah. That, yeah. I was like, don't say that. And then got yeah. called out. That's what is hilarious. And his face yeah. and just like balloons up bright red. And it's like, Sam, oh, your hands up. You got caught, mate. You got caught chatting yeah. shit. And yeah. listen, you know, this is this is boxing, but you know, it's it's funny. It's funny. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people taking it take it way too serious. Mm. You know, way too serious. Um it's not it's not the worst thing that, that somebody could say about you. Um, you know, it's just a, it's like I said today, it's a word flatten. Didn't even say, yeah. Oh yeah, I think I think I think I think you beat Jack, you know. No. He's yeah. just flattening him. So that's like one side and just flatten him. That's it. It's either. Yeah. But listen, that that t- you know, they, they know it's a couple of years ago and um the I think everybody takes everybody everybody doesn't get offended or get gets upset by Sam. Kind of takes him with a pinch of salt. You know, if you're gonna take it for gospel, then it uh, yeah, he's gonna rub you up the wrong way with so many things. Amount of shit he talks about so many fighters and amount of banter he has with everybody. If you took it all seriously. You 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 date him, mm-hmm. but it's it, you take it with a pinch of salt. He is what he is. He's a salesman. He's, he's you know he's, he's he's a character. Game needs characters. It just like it needs you know we, we've got your characters like you bank like your kind of Ben's like you you know Ben Whitaker's people are like on the fighting side of things. Eddie's a character. Eddie's a big character. You know Eddie's Eddie's done yeah. you know, promoters. They talk shit to get the job done and to 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 sell or to get a fight made or whatever. You know, what is it? Um, Bob Arum, you know, uh, yesterday, today I'm telling the truth, yesterday I was lying all back, something like that. Yeah. It is what it is. Um, but, yeah, as long as as long as long Carol knows what the crack is and, yeah. and Jane, that, it don't make any difference. It's just another talking point and it's a, it, it was a giggle. That's what it was. It was mm-hmm. we're, all, we're all laughing and we're all laughing at Sam. And yeah. Sam's, got a, Sam's got a pot on his big boy pants here because... You know, it's all right giving the shit, but when you get caught out with shit and when you get get shit back, you just gotta ride the wave, man. Ride the wave. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely I definitely agree on on that point from yourself. Um, but yeah, just sort of swiftly moving on from, from one press conference to another. Obviously, on Wednesday, I believe, we had the, the press conference with Tyson Fury and Alexander Rusick. Alexander Rusick dressed as agent, but obviously we're talking about video yeah. games, he was dressed as agent 47 from from Hitman. Um, yeah, not much between between the pair, pretty um it's sort of not subdued, but pretty respectful between them. Um, yeah, what did you make of the press conference and head of the, the the big fight on December twenty first? Apart from the track that Tyson Fury walked out to, and apart from the outfit that the Usyk walked into, there wasn't a lot to say, was there? There's never going to be a lot. If if Tyson's in that mood where he doesn't want to speak much, then he don't give you much. And Usyk's Usyk, you know, he he he. You know, he basically spoke without speaking in his outfit, and you know the briefcase, and getting Tyson to sign that um, that photo so he could raise some money um, for the Ukrainian soldiers and things like that. He was never going to get a lot, you know. Mm-hmm. He, he, just not. I, th- I think Tyson knows this time, whereas he was calling him names before the last one. Can't really do that this time because he got beat. You know, it'd look pretty silly if he'd be calling him all names under the sun after having got beat. So I think it's just business now and, and he's, he knows he's got a job to do and he's going to prepare to the best that he can to, to get the job done, really. Yeah, we'll just touch on that on that rematch there. Obviously, it's about, what, two months away now, uh, less than two months away. So, um, yeah, just I, obviously it's, it's clear to see what happened in May in the first fight. So how do you view the rematch as it is um, yeah, a couple months away? First one was a good fight, very good fight. Um, for me, and it's not my opinion, but Usyk boxing at heavyweight must be taking a lot out of him as a fighter. It's I I I think it's it's aging him 
as a fighter because he's he's not naturally their sort of size. And so when you're just getting clumped around on your shoulders, on your body, and you know, obviously in your head, there's, there's a lot of wear and tear that's going on you. You know, don't forget he's having he's sparring big guys and things like that as well. Um, and that last fight was a very, very hard fight. I always said going into it, for Usyk to win, he, he would have to work very, very hard because Tyson's got all the physical advantages, the height and the reach, the weight, the, you know, just 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 how big and of a lump he is. So, yes, it, it wins the fight, but it's a monumental effort for him. You know, he's absolutely shattered at the end. He was, you know, pretty busted up. Um, and that sort of thing, when you get into, what is he, 36, 37, when you get into those sort of ages, it, it has a toll on you. You know, I I know the the, the wear and wear and tear that that um, fighters like Ryan Rhodes, like like um, uh, Tony Bellew, like even Derek. When I de- the wear and tear on fighters is 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 a lot. It's a real thing. Um, so for me, it's like if if he if he still has, I'm not saying he's not any, he's not got anything left. I'm not saying he's he's declined in that manner but i'm saying physically if he's still got enough to have another you know another fight like that then i think Usyk wins again people people are discounting the the early work that Usyk was doing as though it was a game game of two halves um i thought right from the start Usyk was finding finding fury's body um you know with the straight shots but not just the jabs but the backhands as well straight to the body they have an effect they they Empty the gas tank. They, you know, they're effective punches. Um, Fury, we know now, can really, really be hurt by Usyk. Mm-hmm. You know? And and Usyk, he he may have believed, but he didn't know that he could really, really have Fury, you know, on the verge of being gone. Listen, let's be right. If that if that was the other way around, that round mm-hmm. nine, the fight was stopped. The fight would have been yeah. stopped 100. So really, Usyk knows he can stop Fury. He knows he can because another referee, another day, that fight would have been stopped. So he can have him in all sorts of um, uh, trouble. What that does up there as well, but some, especially somebody like him, it's put him on another level in terms of confidence. Yeah. Um, but he's still got to be smart because does he look for the power too much and allow Fury to to nick rounds and. Uh, you know, I think it's going to be a clever fight, a really cagey fight, and then again, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to find itself into a way where it's a very physical fight again. Um, you know, I'll I'll reserve judgment on who I think is going to win. A bit closer. Um, I am interested to see how Tyson comes back from it because I do, okay. I do believe that just like I've, I'm saying about the wear and tear on on, on Usyk, I do believe Fury, the, the best mm. of Fury's gone. And that's not being disrespectful to him, and all right, it that's just the man's. And he has had a long career, really, but it's the um, uh, the Wilder fights. He's getting it off a big, you know, big punching guy, right? The Wilder fights. The third Wilder fight was absolutely brutal. No fight is ever the same after that fight. You know, everyone, we all we all see what's happened with Wilder, yeah. but like it's so obvious, and it's like, there you go. Mm-hmm. With Fury, because of his style, because of, probably probably he didn't not really didn't catch up on him straight away, but it was masked until it comes to it. Yeah. And then you look at him at, against Angano as well. Um, and- so just picking it back up from there, it was a point I was going to mention there where. Obviously, you mentioned before about sort of the damage that Usyk took moving uh, as a heavyweight. Um, but also, you also mentioned there about the point that Fury made. Um, so, yeah, just sort of just moving, just sort of touching back on that point. Um, the, the fresh, as you say, you, you fully believe sort of the best days of Fury are gone as, as the point you just mentioned. Yeah, because, you know, for me, I just think that when you're not... Um, when you get to this stage in your career where you, you, you are on the decline, it's, you can pull out another great performance. I'm not saying that. But once you start um, not being able to take shots like you used to do, and when you're not quite at the same fight in, in terms of resilience as what you used to, um, once that's been chipped away, you can't get that back. 
it's not that you can get by. You might you can still pull out great performances and and your boxing IQ and things like that. But in terms of that that toughness, it's I've not seen it. I might I may be wrong, but in my experience, I've not seen it. Where you know you you, you see these guys that are very very tough, very very, tough, and then all of a sudden they start going. And when they start going, they can't they can't get it back. That toughness and, and you know getting hit and being bounced around the ring and things like that. They're alien to fight a, a certain type of fighter that's known for toughness, resilient. And all of a sudden, you know, he's getting, you know, he, he, he got dropped, obviously, with Wilder, huge puncher, Garnu, big puncher. But they're damaging shots because of the, the weight of the shots, they're damaging. You, you're taking shots like that, it's damaging. And then, obviously, we saw with Usyk as well. Now, Usyk, Usyk punches hard. We, I, I said that at Cruiserweight. People were saying he, you know, well, he's not, he's, he's not the biggest puncher. He hits hard enough to damage you. You know, he does it hard. He's got even at Cruiserweight. He had a good knockout record, but it's the accumulative effect. And then going up to heavyweight, they're saying, oh, I don't punch hard enough to punch hard. But again, if he didn't hit hard, these big heavyweight monsters just walk straight through him. Mm-hmm. But when he hits them, it registers. It registers, and then eventually, they, they feel the effects badly. Um, and in Fury's case, you know that round nine was 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 pretty brutal. Um, so again, we have questions about him. Can he can he come back from it? And and you know in, in what manner? But this is what makes it such a good fight. And it's not you know, like I said, it's not digging him because I'm saying the same thing about Usyk. I don't, I don't know if Usyk's going to have that that you know capability because it was such a monumental effort last time. Can he dig another one out again? Um, because he's going to have to. He's always going to be an hard fight with Tyson Fury. It's always going to be. If he wants to maul you, if he wants to be tricky in boxing and walk you onto shots, you're going to get hit by, off a big, big guy. You know? So both fighters, I think it's such a good fight, such an intriguing fight. And I think, you know, whereas going into the first fight, some, some wondered, oh, it could be a stinker this. And it turned out to be fantastic. Mm-hmm. I think this fight is going to be just as good. Mm-hmm. Just you mentioned there about the, the Mars on the clock with Tyson Fury. Um, and when you see the the adaptation in his style now, where you look at the Klitschko fights, you look at previous fights before, like the Chisora fights, where he's sort of a little bit more nimble, like, like box on the back foot a little bit, a little more slip and move. Whereas you see now, obviously, with the Wilder fights, where he's a little bit more aggressive and the White fight, where he's more aggressive. Do you think that change in style came because he couldn't keep up with the fact of he couldn't he couldn't box how he'd want to box anymore? Does that If that makes sense. Um, maybe it came with a style because the Kronk style, mm. maybe it's the, the, the Kronk style, you know, be more domineering, get the jab going and be, be the boss in there more than being tricky and, and, and using your legs more. Um, um, maybe it's but, that, I don't know, because I don't know, I, I don't work in that, yeah. you know, that, with that team. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, but that is, you know, it could be because, Maybe not so much then, but now to try and rewind the clock back, if you want to go back yeah. to that, it could be harder because the legs aren't the same. You know, I'm not saying they aren't, but I'm saying it's a question. And I'm saying from what we're seeing and, and how he is, maybe the legs aren't the same. And if yeah. they're not the same, how long can you keep that going for? Can you still be in coordination with it all? I don't know. But these are all questions for the fight. I'm not, they're not statements, they're questions. Yes. But for me, it's like they have a, a lot to do with how the fight goes, which is why I can't pin myself to say, oh, he's definitely going to win, or pin myself to say, he's definitely going to win. Because there's so many different elements to the fight where I see you have an impact. But in terms of style change, I think a lot of that could could be because it's because it's the Kronk style and, and they are more, you know, more aggressive and looking for the knockouts. And, and you've got this high physical advantage, you know, be the be the bigger man, the the boss in there, rather than giving up space all the time and, and moving around. Maybe, um, but I just feel that with Usyk, um, it's been used to guys coming at him all through his career. It's it's probably a little bit. It's more difficult for him to use his legs and the angles going forward and landing his good shot, rather than it is when let, letting them walk onto him. You know, and where you can catch him, little half step back, little little steps to the side, and, and firing. You know, um, I think he prefers guys coming to him. So, but we'll see, we'll see. Definitely, from one heavyweight rematch to another potential heavyweight rematch, Daniel Dubois and Anthony Joshua. I know Eddie Hearn came out, and I'm not sure 
forgive what source it was or where he came out and said it. I think it might be talk sport, but I can't remember. Um, he spoke about um, sort of, I guess, a potential delay to Daniel DeBar and Anthony Joshua rematch, maybe looking at potential May time for it instead of February. And from your opinion, um, if the DeBar rematch is uh, the next step for Anthony Joshua, is that a correct one or, or or a very risky one? No, I said I said straight I said straight away when after the fight and they was talking about rematch there. I said I wouldn't I would not for me, my opinion, I wouldn't put him straight into a rematch, not at all. But then I think bite back with that. I think Eddie was saying, not me personally, but Eddie was saying, yeah. or other people were saying, oh, you know, he's, he's done with all rebuilding and, and, you know, why not? You know, he, he, he's he he got beaten a great fight and he, he's going to go straight, why not go straight in a rematch? But I always thought, I, I said in interviews beforehand, the smart thing is, just hang on, maybe see who wins in, in Usyk and Fury in December and then decide, right, okay, do we go, if Fury wins, do we go and make the Fury fight now? I think that's that, that's the smart thing because if you run straight into to Dubois and go straight into that, you don't... Listen, he's, he's an unbelievable athlete. He's always keeping himself in shape. He's had a, an unbelievable mentality for discipline and, and dedication and hard work. But you can't get away from the fact that he asks so many questions in his own head. Mm-hmm. You know, and 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 when when the when the puzzles are in front of him, sometimes he'll he'll be hesitant, he'll doubt himself. Yeah. You saw, you know, after uh, there was a little change with after the Klitschko fight, massive change after the the Ruiz fight, first fight. How how is he how is he going to be to go straight into a rematch with Dubois? Mm. Because it wasn't like he had one success. One success, one good right hand in that in that fight. Just before he got knocked out, it's not like it was a fight where there was a lot for him to take from it. it was good. That that for me, I I just listen. I don't know the kid, and it's all again. It's all hypothetical. It's all ideas. It's all you're asking me questions. So I'm going to answer what, what how I see it. But yeah. going on on the AJ that seen before and the AJ where we'll questioned oh is is he you know is he confident is it this is it that how does he go into a rematch after that mauling straight away and still be 100 percent confident because i tell you what daniel dubois is going to be even more confident he was confident in that yeah. fight he's going to be even more confident you know um and yes he got caught with a really good right hand dubois did and his leg did a little bit of a skip yeah but he has these legs enough for him to fire straight back and, and yeah. be aware of what he was doing. It wasn't it wasn't wobbled wobbled. It wasn't. He, he, he registered. He got caught and he got he got hurt. But he comes straight back aware. It wasn't just a lucky shot. He was aware of what was happening. Um, I just think he'll be even more confident. I just think it's not. I don't think it's the right fight to go straight in. So I would and and also if he does and if he gets. If he gets mauled again by Dubois or if he gets beat again by Dubois in whatever fashion, then again, it's one of those things with Fury. I just want, as a fan, I just I, I want to see yeah. the Fury fight. Whether, whether, whether Fury gets beat or not by Usi, I want AJ and Fury to fight and it's done. And then we'll, because otherwise, it'd be, it, I just think that fight needs to happen. Yeah, I was going to say, like, do you think it does come down to a case of maybe sort of Matram, Hearn, and, and Team Asia looking at, you know, this might be our last chance to really have a roll of the dice at a world title. As you say, he always wants to be a three-time world champion. So, so oh, do you think yeah, that's so, the case? Cool. Yeah, so, so obviously, I, I forgot about that. But I totally get why AJ would want to fight Dubois straight away because it's a it's a straight shot at a world title. Yeah. I get that. I understand that. So I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying oh he's an idiot for that. I'm not saying that. I understand. No, no, cool, cool, cool. But I just think. Um, for me to go straight into a rematch, it lowers his chances of of of, of winning the fight. To go straight immediate rematch. Yeah. Look at how many how many rematches there've been in in in, in boxing or bad fight. How many reverse? Yeah. There's not many in comparison. How many go the same mm-hmm. same winner, same victor? So therefore, lower of odds is is it's kind of like lowering his chances. But yeah. 
he may also think, well, listen, I could go another route, or his team might also think, well, he could go another route and wait and get a shot, and he wants to be three time away champion, but then he could get beat. So you, you don't know. So maybe he's like getting that for that fight. It's fifth fifth day. Do I win? Do I lose? If I win, I'm three time away champion again. You know, if I go into a fight with Fury or whoever, fifty fifth day. Could win, could lose, but then I get through that. I've still got to go in and fight for a title where it's 50 50 day. Do I, do I win or not? Yeah. Maybe they're looking at just a, a, a quick direct route. But at the same time, it is, it's like, you know, I, if if the opportunity is there and if, if that's all he wants, if he's not bothered about the, the, the Fury fight, um, if he values, not that he's not bothered, but if he values being three time heavyweight champion yeah. more than anything else, I understand. Roll dice, go for it. Um, but you've just got to be hundred percent clear in your head. No doubts, no nothing, and and you know you can't you can't in any way, shape, or form doubt yourself going into that ring because there's a there's there's literally a bull across across the ring from you that's ready to charge, and he's not going to give you time to settle into a fight. You know, you've got to go in and, and build confidence. You've got to go in there right from round one, right from the first bell, believing that you can you can turn this result around and believing what you're capable of doing. Yeah, absolutely for sure. And definitely, as as you say, it's a, an interesting one, interesting question to be answered. David, it seems a perfect time to, to sign off. As always, a pleasure to be speaking to you. Always do appreciate catching up with you. And uh, yeah, any uh, any last words before you do, uh, before you do uh, leave on this weekend? No, not a lot, mate. Not a lot. Just, uh, just... Just enjoying the the big fights and just hope to keep on coming. Just hope that a lot more UK domestic shows are happening. And um, yeah, that's it. Hope the fans keep on supporting boxing. Absolutely. Let's hope so. Dave, it's always a pleasure to speak to you, mate. Always do appreciate your time massively, mate. And yeah, have a good weekend. Top man. Cheers, Matt. And you'll see you later. Thank you. Cheers.